G'day there guys, it's your Aussie hubby Marky, back at it again with another r slash legal advice video. Now if you love me like I love you, then you know what to do. I want you to smash that like button like Crocodile Dundee tackles crocodiles. Maybe even chuck an Aussie flag down in the comments. Now with that said, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn on the barbie, and get ready for some bloody good legal advice. Now our first post is by user Trimley, titled, New York. Girlfriend is pregnant, I want the baby, she wants to give up for adoption. What does the law say? My girlfriend is five months pregnant, and we can't seem to be able to agree on what to do with the baby. I absolutely want this child and want to be a father. However, she wants to give the child up for adoption to a couple that she has found. We talk about it all the time, and she always ends up saying, it's ultimately my decision, not yours. And I don't know to what extent that is true. Some background, I'm 20 and have a job, she is 22 and a student. We've been together for two years. We live in Buffalo, New York. Is she right that it is her decision and not mine? And if not, how can I ensure that she can't give up the child for adoption behind my back? As your first step, you probably want to register with your state's putative father registry. That will help if the mother tries to keep you off the birth certificate. As the second step, you should contact a family lawyer. The mother will soon find out that giving up the baby for adoption is a lot more complicated than she naively thinks. So, sooner or later, lawyers will get involved. Better be prepared in advance than get surprised by it later. If she really doesn't want the baby, there is a good chance that you could get custody and she would have to pay you child support. But that's a legal problem best navigated with the help of a professional. If you can't afford a lawyer, see if there are any free clinics or try to borrow money. This is a decision that will affect the rest of your life. Don't be penny wise and pound foolish. Fight for your family. Thank you. I'll find the best family lawyer in town and call for an appointment on Monday. I was afraid that she can bypass me in this, but I'll fight for my family as you say. First off, I just want you to know that I do think that it's great that you want to be a father to your own child. That's awesome and fantastic. But from a life advice standpoint, I also want you to think about a few things. Are you prepared for raising this kid by yourself? Your girlfriend has made it clear that she doesn't want this baby. Are you prepared to be a single father? There's a good chance that she'll break up with you if you keep the baby. There's also a good chance that she'll just do the bare minimum required of her by the law, which is just paying child support. I just want you to think about the possibility and hopefully you already have, and this little lecture is entirely unnecessary. But I do know a handful of men and women who have kept babies their partners didn't want, and were somehow surprised when the unwilling parent ditched them with the kid. Thanks for the life advice. I'm not a delusional person. My relationship with her will be over once the baby is born. She doesn't want this baby, and if I end up with the baby, she'll be gone and I'm fine with that. I don't count on her for anything. I'll do everything I can do to be a good father. My family will also help me. I don't deny that I'm a little freaked out, but if I wasn't, I guess you'd say I'm naive. Please still pursue child support, even if every penny goes into a trust fund or something for when your baby grows up. It's not whether or not you want to feel independent, it's that this baby deserves a fair chance with support from both parents. It's a good point. I'll bring it up when I talk to the lawyer. She might be selling it or working as a surrogate, FYI. Keep that in mind. As dumb as this sounds, there is a high-priced premium on white babies just born for adoption. Oh my god, is that even possible? Selling a baby? Come on over to r slash adoption. I am an adoptive parent of two. Adoption is expensive for a reason. Agencies lure pregnant women by having their adoptive parents pay for living expenses, etc. during pregnancy. Of course, the agencies take a huge chunk too. If she has chosen a family, it is very likely that she is already receiving money. Agencies and adoptive families both know that the placement is not guaranteed until the parents' rights are terminated, by signing after the birth, and the adoptive families do not get the money back regardless of the outcome. Thus, the reason most birth mothers are pressured into not changing their minds. Do not sign anything without an attorney. As another poster said, register immediately, like now, for your state's registry. You can probably do this online today. If she leaves you off the birth certificate, 
The court hearing any adoption case is required to search that registry before any adoption can go through. Good luck, you can do this. And now, girlfriend is pregnant, I want the baby, she wants to give it up for adoption, what does the law say? Update. I guess it's time for me to post an update to this post. I don't have a happy update, however. So much has happened. On the advice of this sub, I went to a lawyer and did all the necessary paperwork. My girlfriend changed her mind a few times between wanting to raise the baby with me and wanting adoption, but in the final weeks of the pregnancy, she told me that I'm not the father at all. I thought she was lying, so I asked to do a test. We went and did one of the pre-birth blood tests, and the result was negative. She was telling the truth. I wasn't the father. I broke up with her then. I was so heartbroken. She had cheated on me and made me think I was going to be a father for months. I was curious about who the father was though. I asked her and she told me that it's the man who was going to adopt the child from her. Yes, this man screwed my girlfriend and now wants to adopt his own baby from my girlfriend with the wife who had no idea. I thought this wife deserves to know, so I went to their house when he wasn't home and told his wife everything. She had a complete breakdown in front of me. I felt sad that I caused this, but I imagined it was her husband who cheated on her that really caused it. She called my now ex-girlfriend to get confirmation, and she told her the truth, then called her husband, and that was when I left. Now the baby is born, and I've heard that my ex-girlfriend and the man have moved in together in an apartment and are raising the baby. I guess his wife will divorce him soon. It will take years to recover from this. I want to thank you for your advice and help. It's sad that things turned out this way, and I hope the baby grows up to be a decent person, despite being raised by two cheaters. Alright, and our next post is by Throwaway201602. Titled, If a traffic sign hits your car, can you sue the city? Throwaway account here. This Sunday, February 28th, 2016, I was northbound on I-90 in Chicago, and a sign fell over and was hanging over the highway and hitting cars. Mine was one. I didn't even see the sign as it came right at about eye level like a knife. I happened to have a dash cam running. See screen caps here from the video. Oof, that doesn't look nice. The white truck probably also got nailed as it had pulled over right past the sign. I took it to an auto repair place, and the cost of the repair is $900, just under my deductible of $1,000. So a few questions. Is this even worth suing the city of Chicago over? I preserved the COE by removing the SD card, and I have the original footage. Is there a place to file a report that would help others whose car might have been damaged? You can sue whoever is in charge of maintaining that road. It may be the city, but I don't want to just assume look to the Department of Transportation or Chicago equivalent. I-90 will be a state-maintained road, so the city probably has nothing to do with it. Most states have a court of claims for damage such as this, but there may be limitations. In my state, there has to be a highway employee at the site before the state is liable, and or the state has to have had notice of the road defect. Also, was the sign hitting cars, or were the cars hitting signs? Don't know the answer to that one, Chief. Edit, not from Illinois, but from a neighboring state. Edit two, I called the city clerk's office as their domain has been hijacked. They told me to contact IDOT. Edit three, thanks for the advice, folks. For I-90, you submit a claim with IDOT. The process is that you leave a voice message for them to send you a paper form in the mail. What year is it? And now, update. If a traffic sign hits your car, can you sue the city? Thank you for the great advice offered when I posted to r slash legal advice. I took that advice and was successful. I have an update. Warning, this is going to be very long, a year plus of bullcrap denials. Skip to the end for the TLDR. So, accident tore a hole through the roof and nicked the windshield. Repairs were about $1,000, insurance deductible was $1,000. I caught the incident on a dash cam that records speeds, GPS time, GPS position. Contacted IDOT with their little form. IDOT referred me to ISTHA. ISTHA identified the location as under the control of the company, we'll call them Jayco. Jayco sends a letter saying that it wasn't in their area and that it was in the company Keiko's area. 
I call Keiko, they say nope. I get a call from the local director of Jago. Let's call him POS. Says it wasn't them and that someone else also had property damage that that Keiko is handling and that the issues and Keiko is the company to contact, not them. I send a letter to Istha and include a map that identifies time and GPS lat slash lon location along with a note about the phone call. Istha sends a letter back to Jayco, which states, no, it's Jayco's area and handle this with the insurance party directly and CC risk management with the details. Six months go by, nothing. I follow up with a letter and a screenshot of the dashcam video with a mile marker visible, asking for a response. Jayco says, winds were 41 miles per hour that day, not our responsibility. I follow back with this letter showing that the raw data from the NWS stored by the NOAA says that their claim is without merit. No response. So now I'm getting worried about the statute of limitations as we're getting close to one year away from the event. I call Istha and say, what's up? They can't offer advice. I forget exactly how I asked, but it came up that engineering might want to be CC'd on my next letter as they decide who gets bids. I start looking around for lawyers. It turns out that I have to file in Illinois. There are some great resources for lawyers in Illinois, but when the lawyers hear it's for $1,000 in damages, they all say no, that in good conscience they can't take a case that will cost much more in their time costs than I'd get back in damages. Fine, I'll do it myself. So I look at the Illinois Small Claims Court. It allows electronic filing. I know you can lose with incorrect details on the filing, but the state of Illinois provides numbers you can call for people representing themselves in small claims courts. I call, I find out. You have to file in the district court in which the accident occurred. You can ask for court fees when you file. Don't put anything much on the complaint other than this accident occurred at X location at Y time. This is in the district in which I'm filing. Defendant refuses to pay. Therefore, I'm filing for damages plus court fees plus related fees. The classification you have to put down when filing. You can file online and the date of submission is the date when you press submit. It's before 4 p.m. I forgot the exact time. I call Jayco and the conversation with POS goes like this. I say, I want to avoid a lawsuit, but I need you to pay for damages and the statute of limitations is coming up. Four other people had this issue. One was a woman who said a tractor trailer hit the sign. What is her name? Don't know, but she sued the trucking company for $4,000. What's the name of the trucking company? Don't know, but you should be suing them, not us. How did a truck hit the sign? The sign was behind a concrete barrier. Yeah, the truck hit the barrier, bounced off it and damaged the barrier and sign. The dashcam video shows no such evidence. The barriers are all fine and there aren't even skid marks up to them. I might have to take you to court. See you in court. Wasn't even our sign. The sign is from a subcontractor. Names the subcontractor. So I'm like, what's their number? And he gives me their number. So I call the sign subcontractor. Dead end. I file the lawsuit against J. Co., asking for damages plus costs to file the lawsuit. Choose just regular certified mail. A month or two later, and I get a letter from their corporate office. This supposedly local company was actually a subdivision of a much larger company, possibly international, asking to settle and not bring any further claims against this matter in exchange for 100% of what I asked for. I agreed. Call the small claims court and ask about the cancelling of the lawsuit and the legal advocate there insists, until the check clears, do not cancel the lawsuit. Okay, I get it, but what's the process? Until the check clears, do not cancel the lawsuit. People get caught by this all the time. Uh, okay. I really do understand, but what is the process? Can't do it. Have to go to trial, but you can tell the judge at that time that you asked for dismissal. Check clears a few days before the trial. Call the court, and they say that I have to show up. But if no one shows up, the case is dismissed, and that this is very common. I say it would be a long drive and inconvenient for me to get there. And they ask if I can just fax in my request to dismiss the case with settlement details. They say yes and make an attachment, the person I'm talking to and the judge. I send the fax. 
I call Jayco to let POS know I'm asking the case to be dismissed. He's no longer with the company. P.S. Having public resources like GPS, the court system, NOAA is awesome. I couldn't have stood up to a massive company like this without either spending a crap load on lawyer's fees or having taxpayer paid infrastructure like judicial advocates, freely accessible NOAA data, and a legal system that puts individual claimants on an equal basis with any dishonest company. People may complain about paying taxes, but a well-run government is an indispensable tool for us regular citizens. PPS, always have a dash cam that records GPS date time and location. An $80 investment saved me $1,000. The one I have isn't sold anymore and isn't as good as newer ones, so I'm not identifying it. Righto, our next post is by Fire and Fury 12 titled, I got visited by some agency and I don't know what to do. Searches and seizures, oh god. Hi, I'm a lurker on Reddit most of the time and I didn't plan on getting an account until this absolutely surreal experience a couple of days ago. I live in an apartment building near Atlanta if that helps. So I was visited by this government agency I'd never heard of called TSA. It's not the airport one since I haven't traveled via plane for years now, and because I don't think TSA officers can visit people's homes. They said they were law enforcement and that they needed to search my apartment but I didn't let them in because I've never heard of an agency called the TSA other than the airport one. They showed me a warrant, but I still didn't let them in. Eventually they called for someone, and someone from the FBI came from their office in Atlanta. They showed me their card, and that they were from something called GEMA HS. I don't know what it stands for. They got in contact with the police, which confirmed the warrant, and I allowed them to enter my apartment. They did a search and then left. Am I in trouble because I haven't done anything wrong? I'm a grad student and I can't afford for something to go on my record. I'm still pretty confused as their uniforms had an emblem on it with three mountains and the uniforms what they were wearing did not resemble law enforcement uniforms, but rather they were wearing very professional suits and I didn't see any weapons on them. Well, TSA is a branch of the Department of Homeland Security and they do in fact occasionally investigate matters off airport grounds. I am a Georgia criminal defense attorney and am aware of GEMA HS. It is the investigative arm of the Georgia Emergency Management Agency. If I had to hazard a guess, I'd guess that a package arriving at Hartsfield Jackson and addressed to your location contains something that they are interested in getting to the bottom of. You didn't order contraband from outside the United States, did you? Don't answer that question might want to talk to a lawyer just in case. If this is the case and whether you did or didn't order contraband, do not, under any circumstance, sign for a package you are not 100% sure of the shipper slash origin. Refuse and return to sender immediately. This is how law enforcement sets up a controlled delivery. Sign for that package and your door will be knocked in shortly thereafter. This scenario makes the most sense of any scenario that I can think of with the information given. Nobody has said it yet, but you should at least start looking for a criminal defense attorneys. If I'm remembering similar posts, you can find them through your state bar website. I realize you're very in the dark, but it's best to prepare ahead of time wherever you can. Also, be sure not to talk to police any more than necessary. I want my lawyer is a universal answer to any question and silence cannot be held against you in court. Thank you for the advice but which point would an attorney become necessary in your opinion? You've already been visited by some branch of law enforcement, it's time to get a higher power involved. At least get their cards, you can give them a call if you're arrested. Thank you for the information. I've started looking for lawyers now, and I've been told not to tamper with anything, so that's exactly what I'm doing. GEMA HS has a unit involved in school safety, weapons, terrorism. If there is any chance at all that something you wrote or posted or otherwise produced could in any way be perceived or misperceived as a threat to your or some other school, that could be why you got a visit. As Monk Token said, you probably should look around for a consultation with a criminal defense attorney just in case. I'm very active on Twitter, but I haven't said anything threatening. I do criticize politics a lot, so perhaps that's the case. I really have no idea. 
The cause of the warrant may have not even been something you said or did. A friend could have somehow said or written something. There is no way to know what they were looking for unless they tell you. I've never had anything like this happen to me, but I know if it did, I would want to have the business card of a criminal defense attorney in my wallet slash pocket for my one phone call. Hopefully they didn't find whatever they were looking for and will leave you alone. But I'm the suspicious type and would sleep better after an initial consultation with a lawyer. And now, edits. I contacted the Atlanta Bar Association's attorney referral line as directed to by user Triceratops. They put me in contact with an attorney whom I've spoken to, and he's told me not to speak about the case anymore. We've set up an initial consultation meeting, and I would like to thank everyone who helped me sort this out. I was totally lost in the beginning and had no idea what to do, but you guys gave me guidance and helped me out during my time of need, and that for that I am very grateful. And this came out of fucking left center about the carbon monoxide leak. I called the fire department and they said they've already at my apartment assessing the leak. The utility company has also been called and they're sending their own representatives as well. My friend took me to the hospital to get assessed for carbon monoxide poisoning and I'm currently here and they're performing some tests on me. Thank you once again guys. Once there's an update and I'm allowed to by my attorneys to speak on the matter, I'll be sure to update you guys. Pretty sure this guy died because he didn't post an update further from this and I'm upset. But that's life and you know, it looks like he did get the advice and he said to everyone, thank you for the help. He might have just died of carbon monoxide, who knows. Anyway guys, this has been Marky, I hope you have a good day, night, sleep, whatever you've been up to, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.